I just spent weeks deep diving into telescope options for astrophotography, and here's the brutal truth. Most guides are written by people who've never actually struggled with the budget scope. I have. For four years, I've been pushing my Celestron 130 SLT OTA to its absolute limits. And what I discovered will save you from making expensive mistakes. Welcome to Astro Imagery. I'm Carl, and unlike most telescope reviewers, I'm not going to pretend I own a warehouse full of scopes. I have just one telescope, the 130 SLT, and I've learned exactly what works and what doesn't when you're starting out. Today I'm sharing everything I wish someone had told me before I bought my first telescope. Here's what nobody tells you. Most telescopes under $500 are designed for visual observation, not astrophotography. When I first got my 130 SLT, I thought I could just attach my camera and start shooting. Wrong. I couldn't even reach focus. This was extremely frustrating and I didn't know what was wrong. That problem is called back focus distance. Visual telescopes are built for your eye, which sits much further back than a camera sensor. This is the first wall most beginners to astrophotography hit, and it's why so many people give up. But here's where it gets interesting. After a lot of research and some creative problem solving, always necessary in astrophotography, I think, I realized that the real issue wasn't in the focuser or the telescope itself. It was the position of the primary mirror. So I 3D printed custom mirror clips that hold the mirror a little bit further forward than the originals did. This simple mod shifted the focal point just enough for my camera to finally reach focus, and it didn't cost me much at all. Suddenly I was able to capture deep sky targets like the Orion Nebula and others with my 130 SLT, and my telescope was now ready for astrophotography. If you want the exact details of how I did this, and even the 3D print files of the clips, check the link in the description below. This one tweak can save you hundreds on modifying your telescope and transform what is essentially a visual telescope into an astro astrophotography telescope. And this will work for many reflector Newtonian telescopes. Of course, the best thing is not to buy a telescope that is unsuitable for astrophotography in the first place. But if you have made this mistake, this solution will get you out of that. So if you're willing to tinker, you can stretch a budget telescope way beyond what the marketing says. And that's exactly what I've done. After more than four years with the same scope, here's what I've learned that actually matters. Back focus is everything in astrophotography. If your telescope can't re reach focus with your camera, the optical quality doesn't matter, period. So don't go buying the wrong telescope that's unsuitable for astrophotography. But if you do make this mistake, as I did, there is a way out. And I've shown you that if you have a reflector telescope, you can fix that. Focal ratio beats aperture for beginners. My 130 SLT is f5, which means it gathers light much faster than an expensive f10 refractor. For astrophotography, this translates into total exposure time that's much less than would be otherwise required. And you can have much more success under light polluted skies. Collimation is king. And I learned this the hard way by making many mistakes. It's well worth taking the time to learn how to collimate well. And I use a laser collimator for this. It doesn't take more than five to 10 minutes. You need to do it regularly though. And don't skip this step or you could regret it later. The mount matters more than the telescope. I've seen many times $5,000 scopes on shaky mounts producing unusable images. My budget 130 SLT on a decent tracking mount has captured nebulae that looked impossible when I started out. 
Quick note before we dive into specific recommendations, the telescope links I'm about to share are affiliate links in the description. I earn a small commission if you use them, but it doesn't change your price and it helps support the channel. Let's break down exactly what you can expect from each budget level when choosing a telescope for astrophotography. No hype, just real world results and all with examples so that you can know what's possible. So let's start with a budget of under $300, which would really include entry level telescopes. First up, the true budget options, uh, SV Boney's SV 48P refractor is one example. With these kind of scopes, expect crisp lunar shots and basic planetary details, but I don't think it would be suitable for DSOs. Incidentally, I'll also put the telescope that I got into this budget level as my telescope, including the mount, cost around this amount, and I'm still using the telescope tube itself and getting quite good results with them. It is a five inch reflector. So I could also recommend the Celestron 130 SLT, but I wouldn't because you will need to modify this kind of a telescope to use in astrophotography. So I do recommend that you go for something suitable for astrophotography from the get go. Now let's look at the 300 to $600 range. And this would include smart telescopes and Newtonian telescopes. So for example, the Seastar S50 smart telescope, this really, really has changed the game for beginners. It's a wonderful way for beginners to get started in astrophotography with the minimum fuss and bother. It's fully automated. You'll be able to capture bright nebulae like Orion and even some star clusters, all with minimal effort. Imaging Newtonian telescopes like the GSO 6-inch, which is F4, also would be in this range. And I'd recommend these kind of Newtonians as well, using one myself. With their fast optics, you'll see brighter deep sky images in less time. Think the Orion or Lagoon Nebula, and even some galaxies like Andromeda. Of course, there's a potential for so much more, as you'll see if you look at the images that I can get out of my budget telescope. Now let's move up in the budget scale to between $600 and $1,000. So this I would say is the astrophotography sweet spot. And here's where things begin to get serious. The Skywatcher Evostar 80ED is one that I really like, and it's a legend. And the reason is because it gives sharp, color corrected stars and beautiful wide field shots of galaxies and nebula. The SV Boney SV503 ATED is a budget friendly alternative with very similar performance. So you could consider either of these two. Another good telescope which comes well recommended or well tested in the astro world is the Astrotech AT60ED. This is a 60 millimeter refractor and it's ultra portable but it also delivers really, really razor sharp images, perfect for wide star fields and large nebula complexes. In terms of Newtonian telescopes, one to watch out for is the Skywatcher Quattro 200P. That's a 200 millimeter aperture or eight inch F4 Newtonian, bringing serious light gathering power for deep sky imaging. Now, I know we talked about budget, but as I'm considering myself as well, at some point, if you get really serious with astrophotography, you'll probably begin to look as you get more advanced at the higher budget range too. So now let's just consider the $1,000 plus premium range. At the top of this range, I'd say the William Optics Red Cat 61 is the gold standard for wide field imaging with pinpoint stars, stunning nebula and rich star fields. You'll also find premium versions of the Astrotech AT60ED here with exceptional build quality and glass. My favorite kind of telescopes are the imaging Newtonians and they're available throughout the budget range. 
So no matter what your budget, you can get Newtonians like GSO and Skywatcher Quattro series. They deliver really amazing bang for your buck, especially for deep sky imaging. Just remember, they need regular collimation, as we talked about, and a steady setup with a very, very secure mount. Every scope that I've mentioned here is well supported in this astrophotography community, and I do advise you to use tried and tested equipment where you can find tutorials online, you can find sample images, and so much advice if anything goes wrong or you've got some questions about the equipment that you've bought. Here are some lesser known telescope traps that rarely get mentioned in mainstream guides but can really sabotage your astrophotography journey if you're not careful. Now I fell into a few of these mistakes so I know what they mean and also I'd like to help you avoid them. Here are some of the extra tips that are not usually mentioned when you're doing research to buying a telescope. Painted or shiny tube interiors. If the inside of the tube isn't matte black, you'll get internal reflections and loss of contrast in your images. I did actually include on one of my videos a while back how I flocked my telescope. In other words, how I had to cover my telescope tube on the inside with a kind of matte black sticky fabric that stopped internal reflections in my telescope. So to avoid having to do this mod, buy the right telescope in the first place. Loose or flimsy mounting rings. Bad rings can cause flexure, which just means that they move slightly. When we're talking about astrophotography, the tolerances we need for movement are really millimeters. The slightest flexure can ruin everything in terms of long exposures. No mention of a field flattener or corrector compatibility. For refractors and fast Newtonians, you'll need a field flattener or coma corrector for sharp stars across the frame. If this isn't mentioned, expect trouble. And finally, another major red flag is poor quality control. Some brands have wildly inconsistent quality. Always check for reports of misaligned optics or mechanical issues in user reviews. Why do these matter? Well, these hidden red flags aren't just minor annoyances. They can make the difference between getting beautiful images and giving up in frustration. And remember that the equipment that we're buying isn't cheap. And so it should be of the best quality that you could possibly afford. Manufacturers rarely advertise these weaknesses. But experienced astrophotographers know to ask about them. Protect your wallet and your sanity by double checking for these issues before you buy. When thinking about buying new telescope equipment, it's really, really worth setting realistic expectations. And let me be brutally honest about this and about what you should expect. Your first images won't look like Hubble photos. That's completely normal. My early shots with the 130 SLT were grainy, poorly focused, and nothing like what I imagined. But each session taught me something new. And as I learned these lessons, my images got better and better. Planetary and deep sky imaging need different approaches. The 130 SLT worked great for nebulae and star clusters, but for sharp planetary detail, you need different techniques entirely. Processing skills, as I've recently mentioned in some of my earlier videos, often matter more than the telescope itself. I've seen amazing images from basic equipment and terrible results from expensive gear. Also, I've recently gone through a process of re reprocessing many of my older images taken from a few years back. And when I compare my new image to the ones I had before, you'd think that I'd used new equipment and a better telescope. But no, the magic happens in post-processing. If you're a beginner, start with easy targets, the Moon, Orion Nebula, or wide field Milky Way shots. These build your confidence and teach you the fundamentals. So what's your budget and what do you want to photograph? Drop your goals in the comments. 
and tell us which targets you in particular would like to photograph. If you do drop your comments, I'll answer you and I'll give you specific advice based on my actual experience with budget astrophotography. If you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to my channel because there's lots more coming and I'll see you in the very next one.